reach number six in our countdown. Chemicals are killing us. Of course, some chemicals in high enough doses do kill people, but today there's this idea that quietly, secretly, everywhere, chemicals are gradually poisoning us. This song from 1989 sums it up. Americans' fear of chemicals has caused us to obsess about breathing and hair dye, dry cleaning, coffee, children's pajamas, chewing gum, saccharin, NutraSweet, food additives, even rubber duckies. There's no proof that the small amounts of the chemicals in those products have harmed anyone. The death rate from cancers has actually been declining in America. But our fear is contagious, and that can be deadly. We are losing between 2 million and 3 million people per year. The health minister of Uganda points out that these people may die because of the chemical DDT. But not because DDT is bad, but because Americans' fear of it has deprived much of the world of the chemical that might have saved them. How did this happen? Well, 50 years ago, Americans sprayed tons of DDT everywhere. Farmers used it to repel bugs and health officials to fight mosquitoes that carry malaria. Nobody worried much about chemicals then. People really did just sit there and eat in clouds of DDT. When the trucks came to spray, people often acted as if the ice cream truck had come. They were so happy to have mosquitoes repelled. Huge amounts of DDT were sprayed on food and people who just breathed it in. And amazingly, there's no evidence that all this spraying hurt people. It did cause some harm, however. It threatened bird populations by thinning their eggshells. And this book made the damage famous and helped create our fear of chemicals. But it's the dose that matters, because chemicals are everywhere. They're in vegetables, and vegetables are good for us. Did you know there's something in celery called 8-methoxysorolin that's carcinogenic in rodents? There's something in broccoli that's carcinogenic too, but it doesn't matter because it's the dose that makes the poison. Dose was the reason for the DDT problems. We sprayed so much. But it only takes this amount to prevent spread of malaria. It's sprayed on walls, and one spraying will keep mosquitoes at bay for half a year. It's a very efficient malaria fighter. But today, DDT is rarely used. America's demonization of it caused others to shun it. The U.S. government does spend your tax dollars fighting malaria in Africa, but it does not spend a penny on DDT. It is an extraordinarily delicate and political Thing to use in another country, something we won't use in our own country. DDT was banned in America after we started celebrating Earth Day. Environmentalists made a lot of claims then. You are breathing probably the last of the oxygen. Soon after that came the campaign against DDT. The result? A huge resurgence of malaria. More than 50 million dead, mostly children. If it's a chemical, it must be bad. If it's DDT, it must be awful. And that's fine if you're a rich, white environmentalist. It's not so fine if you're a poor black kid who's about to lose his life from malaria. Amir Adaran is leading a campaign of hundreds of scientists urging the use of DDT to combat malaria. It's needed especially in Africa, he says, because there malaria kills thousands every day. How many people do they want us to lose? Before we use DDT. The U.S. government fights malaria by doing things like paying for bed nets to keep mosquitoes out. But not everyone in Africa even has a bed. But we do not fund DDT, even though USAID acknowledges it's safe to use. I would recommend that if those who want to use the indoor spraying, that they can and should. And it is definitely less harmful than dying and being exposed to malaria. But you won't pay for it. Currently, we don't pay for it. But this is pathetic. Millions of people are dying, and you, to be politically correct, are saying, oh, no, we don't want to pay for DDT. I believe that the strategies we are using are as effective as the spraying with DDT, and we are getting them out as far and as fast as we can. So politically correct or not, I am very confident that what we are doing is the right strategy. If I were to characterize what USAID does on malaria, I'd call it medical malpractice. I would call it murderous. Because of hysteria about chemicals in America, much of the world won't use DDT. And by the time this TV show is over, Malaria will have killed another hundred children. 
U.S. officials now tell us they have reconsidered their policy and they will next year fund some DDT spraying. We'll see. When we return, these criminals don't worry about...